So Sweet Daddy Grace, my man was born in Africa, literally, literally off the coast of Africa. I mean, how could he be anything other than African or an African that lives in America? But one day, my man decides, he declares out of the blue, he was really white. Come on, sweet daddy. Come on, sweet daddy. Come on, sweet daddy. bless you. I appreciate you for being here with me again for another Kojic Conversation. And uh, today is going to be another interesting topic. We're talking about those preachers in the Mason era, 1910 to 1960, that came up and were prominent in the church or prominent in the U.S. around the same time that Bishop Mason had reached his zenith and the things that he did in his ministry. Uh, today, we'll be discussing uh, Sweet Daddy Grace, and uh, he's the founder of the United House of Prayer denomination, and by all intents and purposes, an extremely savvy businessman. Well, got a little bit to say about him. I think you're going to enjoy it, and this is all to get us to the point to where we can discuss what makes our founders so unique and so different, because I want you to know, Church of God in Christ, there's something special about you that no one else can claim to have. And I want you to know that that special thing about you is that you are Mason's children. So let's go ahead and get into this and um, let's see about this sweet daddy Grace fellow. Uh, I think that it's gonna be good for you to hear some of this history. And it's gonna add a lot of context for when we talk about our founder. God bless you and I hope you enjoy the video. Next guy was Sweet Daddy Grace. Sweet Daddy Grace. <clears throat> and uh, uh, also known as Charles Manuel. He was born uh, off the coast of West Africa, believe it or not. Uh, he came uh, in the early 1900s. They moved to uh, uh, Bedford, Massachusetts, New Bedford, Massachusetts. And uh, he started the House of Prayer in about 1921. When he started, the House of Prayer, it grew slowly, but he eventually established new houses of prayer uh, starting in 1923 with the first one across the state uh, in uh, West Wareham, Massachusetts. He had, found, he had founded the Houses of Prayer in Egypt uh, and, and, uh, and in North Carolina and, and, and several other places actually. Uh, poor black folk in, uh, in the cities uh, were drawn to Daddy Grace. Uh, he was uh, uh, Pentecostal holiness, if you will. The Church of God in Christ, the Pentecostal movement, which at times may sound synonymous, but, uh, but they're not always the same thing. But in this situation, uh, the Pentecostal movement uh, had a tremendous effect on Sweet Daddy Grace. Uh, he had a, 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 a tremendous music band with all these brass instruments. He loved the horns. And uh, uh, he was a faith healer. And uh, uh, he would do these mass baptisms. In fact, one year in uh, Buffalo, New York, he charged a dollar a head to baptize. And so many people came that he had to go and get a uh, water hose from uh, the fire department and baptize his folks. I just want you, if you will, to kind of contrast that, if you will, the idea of using a water hose to baptize people uh, during this time for black folk in, the, in Buffalo, New York, where in just a few years, few short years, they'll be using water hoses to brutalize black folk in Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> the, 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 a very interesting uh, contrast there. But uh, he does tremendous things during his life that causes 
incredible economic growth. He uses the resources of the church to spur economic growth for his parishioners and his congregations. Now, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to uh, be upset about that. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very good thing. Uh, but this is what he does. And in, in, in doing that, you can say that he had a great deal of, of success because every... His theological preachings, teachings were based on the idea of a one God, one faith, one baptism, and one leader. Um, the people have said that Sweet Daddy Grace claimed to be God, but, uh, but, but that's, that's not necessarily the truth. He was, he was not like Father Divine, who was overt with it. I mean, Father Divine was so uh, uh, stringent on his claim to be God that they asked him one day, uh, when was he born? And he looked at them and said, God has no birth date. How can I have a birth date? This was not what Sweet Daddy Grace did. But uh, he, he, he did believe that his powers of healing were a sign of the imminent end times. And uh, you know what? We kind of believe that too sometimes. So I can't beat him up for that. Sweet Daddy Grace uh, has a lot of great things going on. His movement moves and does awesome things. Innovative investments, business ventures. Uh, the church uh, grows uh, in this economy in tremendous ways. Uh, he, but he, he builds a corporation or a corporate empire more so than he builds a church. And uh, uh, we often think that our churches ought to be corporations or operated as such, but uh, sometimes that is uh, a, a misnomer. Uh, however, in the case of the United Universal House of Prayer, that is, uh, that was the mode of operation. They own several manufacturing businesses. They own several different uh, insurance businesses. They had, they had pensions for their parishioners, not just the preachers. They had pensions for their parishioners. I mean, uh, if you joined the UHOP, you were, you were getting a deal there. Uh, the, he purchased, here's, here's something interesting. He purchased the headquarters of the peace mission from Father Divine and then kicked them out. He evicted them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's that's so gangster. <laughs> that is so gangster. Um, but he owned all kinds of property in New York, in the metropolitan area, in the city. He owned hotels in the city. He owned all kinds of things in the city. He owned things as far away as Los Angeles and as close as Philadelphia and Detroit, Washington, D.C., and even in Havana, Cuba. Now, some interesting things about Sweet Daddy Grace was uh, the, 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 the ministry was definitely built around his personality. However, it does live beyond his years in a healthy fashion, if you will. It doesn't reach quite the prominence of the Church of God in Christ, but it is a healthy, it's a healthy movement. Uh, they still have a leader. They've produced other leaders, uh, maybe not as charismatic as uh, Manuel, but, but they still produce other leaders. Uh, but Manuel did this really quirky thing. He declared that he was white. He wasn't black, he was white. And, you know, it's all these types of, types of things that really kind of uh, get to you when you start talking about, you know, the personalities that he's been. But Sweet Daddy Grace did a lot of good work, did a lot of good things, and I think that uh, he deserves to be uh, praised uh, for even his uh, teaching of uh, economic nationalism, if you will, for black people who needed to know how to invest and uh, how to make money. He was very, very well 
aware and very, very well versed in that. It may be because he was an immigrant from Africa and not the child of a slave from Africa. That may be something else that we might need to talk about one day. All right, let's talk about the next guy. Prophet Jones. Prophet. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Come on back. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. I'll see you the next time. Be blessed, people. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Join us.